So for those of you who missed our beginning in the sunrise service, I want to take you back where our youth had us before this resurrection song had broken out, before the river started flowing, and, and into that Good Friday and Holy Saturday space. Because the thing of it is, that's the space, that grief, that disappointment, watching Rome once again assert its power, that's the space that was not new. These disciples had seen crucifixion before. They were an occupied people. The followers of Christ hoped that it would be their last, but then once again, the same old story played out, the story that they knew way too well. It was the story that their parents had warned them about in giving them the talk of how to live in a world that wasn't for them of how to stay as safe as they could, how to go unnoticed, how to survive. It was the talk their grandparents had given their parents. It was the talk their great-grandparents had given their grandparents. It was the talk their great-great-grandparents had given their great-grandparents. It was the talk that went on for generations. As for generations, they were an occupied people, passed from Assyria, to Babylon, to Persia, to Greece, to Rome. No wonder they prayed for the return of King David and of that time. Because that's the story that wasn't new. What was new was a tax collector and a zealot, a colluder with the occupier and a rebel to the occupier, living life together in shared ministry and shared daily routine. But all of that had fallen away. And I want us to remember that and center in this moment to remember the awe of what has begun here. And since Earth Day is tomorrow and resurrection isn't just about people but all creation, I wanted to go to the river to the Mississippi River in particular, because it starts in Minnesota at a place that you can walk across from five feet down. This is the webcam, right? And so this area right here is where people be camping, where kids will be playing, where there's gonna be, you know, toddlers playing around, building sandcastles, kicking the water, enjoying of the mighty Mississippi River, 2,320 miles long, the fourth longest river in the world, the 15th largest river of the world, borders and crosses through 10 different states on its way to the Gulf of Mexico, starts in Minnesota at a place where you can walk across five feet down. There's a beginning that happens in this story that the disciples didn't know about. Because here's the thing about headwaters, about the source of a river, of the source of a movement. The people in that moment, in that place, are probably not going to realize the whole rest of the 2,320 miles that are going to come from this one moment because everything still looks the same. Rome won again. There's nothing different, and yet everything has changed because of this source, because of this little first piece of river. Now, it's going to take on different colors. It's going to combine differently than the way we expected. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. But it's there. And the awe of a moment, of a start, of a beginning, is hopeful. And it's also really depressing. <laughs> because 2,000 years later, we look back and we know how polluted and how much trouble the Mississippi River is in. 
We know about the agricultural runoff and the dead zone of the Gulf of Mexico. We know of the history of wars and genocide that have gone since Christ's resurrection, a history that doesn't really live a resurrection reality. And so there's hope and there's depression all rolled into one because both exist at the same time. And that's what happens with change. And whatever movement and whatever process we're talking about, it started here. There has been a power and a river that has been unleashed. And we'll see where it ends. Change is something that unites us all more than the 10 states that share the Mississippi River. And what we do with it, whether that we make that decision from our spiritual faith or from any other understanding, is everything. And the hope that I have today in looking back at this resurrection story is that even in the midst of her grief, Mary heard Jesus' voice and knew who he was. As soon as he called her name, she knew that he wasn't the gardener anymore. She knew that something had changed and she yelled out like Toby did for us and went back to announce that and to share that and to get those headwaters going in a way that was visible for all of us. And Peter, we read from Acts 10 further down in the story. This is the story of Peter going to the house of the Roman centurion Cornelius to baptize him. Y'all, this is Peter as an occupied person. All those generations back, going to the occupier's house and saying what I have really learned is that God shows no partiality and baptizing him, warmly receiving him as family. If a tax collector and a zealot can be in ministry together, if an occupied person and an occupier can find a way to share joy and to bring life to one another, then that's the river I want to be a part of. That's the change that I want to experience and I want all the world to have. I know Cornelius wasn't every Roman centurion. There wasn't a mass transformation here. But there was one. And that miracle, that power, that impossibility, there is no reason in all of the history, because we're not just talking about Rome here, we're talking about a history that goes all the way back from Rome to Greece, can I do it backwards, to Persia, <laughs> to Babylon, to Assyria. That gets ingrained in DNA. And if all of that can be changed, if all of that can be given new life, if that river can be expanded and deepened in that way, I think it's worth it. I think the grief, I think the not knowing of whether the moment we're in is a headwater or not, I think is worth it, even if that miracle only happens once. Even if we never get to know the miracle, even if we never get to see the 2,320 mile long river that comes from it. Because that possibility, that kind of depth, that kind of love, that can do anything. And I want all of us each and every one of us all around this world to experience that kind of hope and that kind of power and that kind of love. For all the days when Rome wins, for all the days when the usual happens, 
May there be a morning that breaks forth as a resurrection morning that sets a new headwaters for each and every one of us. Amen.